A few weeks ago, I posted a video called I Can't Explain This Ryzen RAM Testing, where I was testing with this Ryzen 5600X and RTX 3080, along with a kit of memory that normally runs at 3600 MHz, but that I was using the BIOS to change the settings or change the frequency to see how that affected performance. Now, the gaming results all pretty much made sense. The faster RAM you have, Generally speaking, the better performance you have, or in some cases, the game didn't really care for it, which, again, makes sense. But when it came to the productivity benchmarks, like rendering in Blender and Cinebench, well, that's where it got rather confusing. See, 2133, which was the slowest kit, or the slowest speed I was testing, often outperformed 3600, and by a pretty significant margin. That doesn't make sense. It should be the faster memory you have, the more performance you get, but in this case, it was the other way around. In the video, I asked for suggestions of why this might be happening. And much to your credits, I was inundated with incredibly helpful suggestions. So in this video, I wanna look through some of those suggestions, work out what the problem with my setup was or the, the testing and work out why it's happening and what you can do to fix it. And by an interesting coincidence, also see how Precision Boost Overdrive or PBO affects both the productivity and gaming performance. But first, a message from this video sponsor, Azrock. Their new X570C and B550 Riptide boards offer 10-phase Doctowas power design, their new graphics card holder free in the box, lightning gaming ports for smooth mouse and keyboard inputs, PCI Gen 4 supports with heatsink armor, killer E3100 2.5A GLAN, and a fanless chipset heatsink. Find out more about them at the link in the description below, and thank you to Azrock for supporting the channel. The first suggestion was to check the timings, specifically the tertiary timings, which will get changed anytime you do any changes to your memory uh, as the motherboard retrains to find the stable values for those fields. Now, in trying to validate that and the, the differences between those timings, I actually found out that the primary timings slipped ever so slightly, going from 2133 to 3600. At 2133, the kit is running at its rated CL17, which is 1799-3958, but running at 3600, using the XMP profile, it actually runs at 1899-3984. Now, that's not a significant difference, and certainly wouldn't account for the incredible performance swing that we saw with 2133 often being faster and potentially by a good margin than 3600, but it is interesting to, to see that happen and see that change. But your second suggestion, one from the good doctor no less, was spot on the money. Specifically, I'm talking about power consumption. One of the quirks of modern Ryzen chips is that the socket itself has a, a total power limit. For this 65 watt TDP 5600X, that power limit is 88 watts. The other quirk is that under the metal IHS, the heat spreader, there's actually two separate bits of silicon. One is the chiplet for the cores, and the other is the IO die, which among other things, houses the memory controller. Both of those have to split the available 88 watts of power from the sockets to manage you know, running all the tasks that they need to do. Generally speaking, the cores take priority, except basically the IO die takes as much as it needs and then the cores can do what they want with the rest. That's what's happening here. Running at 2133, the IO die is only sipping back about five or six watts. Running at 3600, well, it's more like 17 watts. And as for the cores, running at 2033, the cores were using 56 watts, whereas running at 3600, they only had 45 watts to play with. That is a significant decline in wattage and very much explains the performance delta I was seeing. So by default, Ryzen's power limit, especially for a chip like the 5600X, does hinder its performance when running with faster memory. And in certain scenarios, it might actually be faster to run a slower kit of memory, 
which I know is a rather weird thing to say. I think it would be interesting to see how the 5800X does, as Ryzen only has two power bands. There is the 65 watt TDP chips, which have 88 watts of socket power available, and then there is the 125 watt TDP chips, which have 142 watts of socket power available. I think with the 5800X only having eight cores compared to the 12 or 16 that their bigger brothers have, that might give them a, give it enough a headroom to be able to run faster RAM without have it running into any issues with the power limits. But if you do own a 5600X and want to make use of your 3600 kits, what do you do? Well, you head to your BIOS and enable Precision Boost Overdrive or PBO. Specifically, you set a PPT or package power tracking target uh, that is above the, the necessary or the required power, which in my case, I set to 125 watts. You'll also want to set a TDC and EDC figure for this. In my case, I set 150 amps TDC and 200 amps EDC, which ended up being plenty for this chip. Those changes resulted in the package power jumping from 76 watts up to 105, meaning that there was plenty of headroom both for the cores to run as fast as their hearts desired, but also for the IO die to run and suck as much power as it needed to run that faster memory. As you might expect, performance saw a marked improvement. In fact, in Cinebench R20 uh, multi-threaded, we saw a 10% rise going from just shy of 4,000 points to over 4,400. The same goes for the Gooseberry scene, where we drop a full 100 seconds from the render type. Now, you might be thinking, well, Andrew, you basically just overclocked the CPU, no wonder it's running faster. And you would be right. We essentially just overclocked the chip, and so it's gonna run faster, but to isolate the variable of RAM speed, I ran the same test again with the same bar settings, with the same power limits unlocked, but with the memory set to 2133. And the results were quite interesting. In Cinebench R20, there really wasn't much of a difference. The, the scores were pretty much within margin of error. And my theory for this still stands that Cinebench really doesn't use much memory. The, the memory utilization is rather low. And so it doesn't really matter how fast your RAM is running if it's not transferring much data in and out. But in the Gooseberry render, that's a different story. The Gooseberry scene uses plenty of memory and so there was a difference in performance. We were looking at the uh, 2133 with the same settings, the same PBO enabled, running 50 seconds slower than the same PBO settings at 3600. So in the right scenario, 3600 offers around 5% more performance than 2133. This is obviously going to be application specific and requires you to enable PBO and set a higher PPT limit, but in that case, it is, as we expected, a little bit faster. Now that's the productivity, but what about gaming? Well, in Watch Dogs Legion, the advantage still lies with the faster memory, although you do gain 3 FPS average by increasing the power limits too. In my testing, Watch Dogs is a pretty CPU limited game, so any increase in horsepower translates well into extra performance. In Cyberpunk, it's well within margin of error between the runs. Although enabling PBO at 2133 did see a slight improvement to 2, FP 2 FPS, both on average and in the 1% lows, plus there's still a 20 FPS gap between running at 2133 and 3600. In CSGO, it's back to wacky races style of performance, where it's very much all over the place. 2133 saw a decent 23 FPS advantage by enabling PBO, whereas 3600 saw a 10 FPS loss. I'd argue percentage-wise, it doesn't really matter here, so I won't dwell on it too long. In Fortnite, while well, the difference between 2133 and 3600 is still somewhat visible, although the performance figures we're talking about are pretty high, so 5, 10, 15 FPS here might not be too visible, but there isn't any benefit to running PBO in Fortnite, and the same can be said about Microsoft Flight. Again, there is still a performance gap, between uh, 2133 and 3600, but enabling PBO doesn't give you any extra performance here. So how do we wrap this all up? 
Well, we found the culprit of my unusual results being Ryzen's power limits. For the average gamer who's building a new system with a CPU like this, it's still probably worth it to buy the faster memory, especially if gaming is all you care about. At best, the faster memory will give you more performance, and at worst, it will just not do too much, but since the price difference generally isn't too massive, it's worth going with a faster kit for the chance of better performance. If you want to do heavier CPU workloads like rendering in Blender or in Premiere or whatever else, then there's a chance that you may have limited performance using faster memory if you haven't unlocked your power limits. If you already have a system like this, then it could be a good idea to unlock those power limits and get some extra performance by enabling PBO, or don't sweat if you have to get a lower speed, especially if you're using more sticks of memory for larger capacities. Personally, I would quite like to test out the 5800X and see if that follows the same trend, or if it being the lowest end chip in that TDP category means that it has enough power budget available to not only boost the cores as fast as they like, but also to run the IO die with faster memory. If that's something you would like to see as well, do let me know in the comments down below. But otherwise, that's it for this, this revisit, this look back at my mistakes and me trying to understand this platform a bit better. If you have any questions or suggestions, things that I missed or misunderstood, feel free to let me know in the comments down below and we can all learn together. Uh, there's also a load of links in the description you can check out for ways to support the channel. There is stuff like Patreon if you want to support me directly or even the YouTube join button should be coming up very shortly uh, for access to our Money Men Discord chats and cool rewards like sponsor free videos. There's also a load of links in the description for merch hoodies or t-shirts like this one. This is an RTX 2060 I designed it myself in Blender. There's a load of other designs there as well. There's also links to Amazon and Overclocks UK if you're buying from there. There's VPN options, Humble Bundle, Streamlabs OES, load of stuff, feel free to check it out. There'll also be more videos on the end cards. If you did miss the first installation of this video then do check that out for a bit of context, I'll leave it in the cards as well throughout the video. And yeah, thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you all in the next video.